We are The Meltdown. Got a chance to see a brand new series, The Acolyte, was able to be streamed for the very first time this week on Disney Plus and is set a century before the collapse of the Republic in a series that is going all in on the Jedi Order. I am Tim Melton and we're here to discuss the eight episode series. We've only gotten a chance to see two of them so far. The Acolyte, which is set in the Star Wars universe, as we plan to react to the show each week in this video series. We have watched those first two episodes. The remaining episodes stream weekly on Tuesdays, where we will be watching those throughout the course of the season. We've never seen this portion of the Star Wars time period that's being displayed on screen before, as we have been introduced to very new Star Wars characters as the series follows a string of Jedi murders with an unknown assailant pulling the strings. John, did you enjoy the setup to this story, which is what makes up the bulk of the first two episodes? It is just a setup, but overall I can buy into the setup. Um, I mean, were there some things I was like, yeah, I don't know about that, I don't know about that. But then there's a lot of it that I had to make myself, I had to correct myself of this is 100 years before anything we've ever heard. Like, oh, I don't, that looks like that. That's interesting. Or, oh, that's a design choice for that. And it is, I guess, design choices because outside of, like, the old Republic, when it comes to video games, I don't know much about Star Wars when it comes to uh, how things were. But there's a lot more to the Jedi that we don't get in the Skywalker saga because the whole point of that is basically once Episode 3 hits and Order 66 happens, there are no more Jedi. So we're kind of in this uh, wasteland of, of Jedis, I guess, for the rest of that series. So... It is fun to see some of the older uh, styles of the Jedi, like their robes are different. Like when they show Coruscant, it looks different than what you've seen in the prequels. But you also got to realize it's 100 years before that. What did, you know, where we are right now look like 100 years ago. None of this existed 100 years ago. So um, there's a lot of that that I kind of call myself like, eh. But it's like, well, I got to stop and kind of pull back a little bit and let this play out. And there's enough of that that it's not like I'm saying, I don't want to watch this because this is kind of weird. There's enough to say, I'm interested enough to see ultimately where this goes because more so than the Jedi, what we have not seen so far is the acolyte is a Sith acolyte is, is a term that they use. And that's what I want to know. We have seen none of that yet. And I feel like they could have given us a little more tease of the Sith side of things that clearly exist. All we saw was basically a red lightsaber and a distorted voice. And that was it. I can't recall force foo being used before on screen, which is what's sort of being, I love that fight. But I hate that you killed Trinity off in the first five minutes, and I feel like that was one of your big selling points, is that she's going to be in this, and it literally was described in all the build-up to it as Trinity with a lightsaber, and Trinity with a lightsaber was cool for five minutes, and now it's not. I mean, I'm sure there'll be flashbacks or something. That's not it's too big a star not to use just for five minutes, but yes, it was very different, but I like that part. She got Drew Barrymore there in the very few <laughs> yeah. moments of episode one. Tyler... Do you like the fighting style that was put on display here of Kung Fu mixed with using the force? And do you think that that worked well? Uh, it, it wasn't bad. I'm not, I don't think by the sounds Sorry. of it, I'm as high. No, you're good. I forgot to turn your microphone on. <laughs> oh, you're good. I don't think use the force and then actively <laughs> <That's right. laughs> made you someone we can hear now. I don't think I'm as high on this show so far as uh, you guys are. It's, uh, it's all right. Um, I'm not terribly interested in seeing where the uh, mystery goes like I'm kind of bought into this being a story I'd like to see play out (laughs) Tyler just activated the motion controls on the camera keep going Tyler Uh, with the force I don't know if uh if I am bought in with my dollars past this first month of uh Disney plus so Uh, you may not see the conclusion of the acolyte which is going to run into the summer months yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep up with it until it gets to a point where I say I'm just done or until I renew. Okay, well, that is what a lot uh, of... I am very on the fence. That's what a lot of people are doing. They are awaiting whether or not they, they love this series to see if they want to go with another month of Disney Plus, I guess. There's enough on Disney Plus that if you decided to say, I'm going to get into it for this, no. there's enough from Disney Plus you can go and watch and enjoy and... I still would recommend some of the Marvel shows. I have enjoyed them all in a little a little way or another, but Tyler, I would recommend go watch Loki while you're at it. Go watch season one and two of Loki if you're not into the Acolyte. See, it's funny you mentioned that because last night I texted Tim and I said, so uh, is The Mandalorian better than uh, The oh, Acolyte? Well, you can watch all that too, yeah. Mandalorian definitely. Because I am interested in seeing The Mandalorian, but if 
quality wise you could say like oh the acolytes right about par with it then no. i'd rather just no cancel and the made i'll say this i don't remember season one like off the top of my head compared to season two and three it gets a lot better because people are more bought into it so mm-hmm. if season one feels like i don't know this kind of seems the same it improves because it's a good enough show that it gets budgets and gets more to it and everything gotcha. like that. I also would recommend Ahsoka. If you like Rogue but One, I would recommend guys, Andor. This is not about the entire <laughs> series of Star Wars content that's We're been put Tyler on Disney+. All those Plus. Don't like it out. I understand. We're here to talk about the Acolyte, whether we love it or hate it. Things keep falling apart here in the studio. <laughs> Maybe it's an omen for I, things to come with the Acolyte series. I just force pushed uh, my mic clip off. Every single day. Every <laughs> single day. Okay, let me try to get these trains back on the track here i don't hate the story it's the execution that feels a little clunky it doesn't Mm -hmm. feel as polished it doesn't feel as much star wars as i would like it to feel for some reason this is just i'm feeling it out i'm not shutting it down like tyler is to where he's literally going to cancel the service it seems like (laughs) i am just hey we still got three weeks wanting to i want to see more and if i think that can be taken away as a positive I've heard episode three is really, really good from those that have seen it. A lot of critics got access to the first four episodes of the season. And season uh, episode three is what continues to be talked about. So I'm looking forward to that coming out next week. And I'm looking forward to seeing if it hooks me in a way that maybe the first two episodes didn't. I thought they were scene setters, those first two. They were just introducing you to these new characters, introducing you to these new storylines, and this new era that we've never seen put on film before. John, is there a character from this that stood out to you the most as someone that you really like so far in the first two episodes of the series? Other than Nandara, who died in five minutes? Um, probably. Other than your love for the Matrix, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I would, I mean, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see who ultimately the Sith leader of this is you know darth whoever it is it seems like that's kind of pulling the strings that there's just enough intrigue in the one scene you have with the red lightsaber shooting out and everything but Um, that may be a swerve it may not even be a member of the Sith. it it, it may be somebody we've already seen that's you know putting a mask on or something uh very you know uh, palpatine like what we saw but of the people we have actually seen i'm actually kind of buying into yord a little bit um i'm I'm glad with Yord we ditched his Padawan and let him come back into being a Padawan because he's a he kind of reminds me of Anakin in a way because with Anakin his whole thing was he would not be granted the rank of master to where he started kind of acting out and I see a little bit with Yord when he first comes in and he's like hey I've been I'm a Jedi Knight now here's my Padawan she went away you have Daphne Keene who's Soul's Padawan who you know mostly from Logan um, and I like Soul. That's sort of where I'm yeah, at right Soul's now. Soul's my favorite character yeah. in See, this I, as well, with as much criticism as I'm giving the show. I do like Soul. And that's the guy from Squid Games, right? Yes. I'm right. Um, which I actually have not watched. But I feel like Yord is in between those two, though. That, that uh, I can't remember Daphne Keene's name in it. Uh, Jackie. That, that, that's his Padawan. She's the, uh, he's the master. But Yord's kind of in between the two. And on the same level, ultimately, as... Osha and May, I guess, both of them, um, when it comes to his power. So I feel like ultimately, if there's a Jedi, and I'm sure Osha's going to end up being the super powerful Jedi, end up to fight May or something, but like he's the one I see, and I'm more intrigued to see, because he's kind of that Anakin of this story, that he's mad when he's not given the chance to be in charge. Like, he's ready to pull his lightsaber and fight, and so I was like, eh, hold on, back off. That's exactly what Obi-Wan would have done to Anakin, or Qui-Gon would have done to Anakin. I get more Qui-Gon vibes from Soul than I do somebody like Obi-Wan, um, which is not a bad thing, necessarily. Qui-Gon just happened to die early in that. I think if he had stayed in the story, I probably still would have liked him. Um, but I like the in-between aspect of kind of what we got with Anakin being in-between things. I'll ask Tyler about what you thought of the pocket-sized droid Pip who is in this that is looking to become the sort of emotional connective droid of the series. Are you buying into Pip as being one of the all-time best droids in the history of Star Wars? All-time best? That's uh, that's yeah, top five. That, that's bold. Um, maybe top five. I don't know. Uh it's just so hard to beat R two D two. So hard to be nice about this series, and you hate it. Just <laughs> go okay. ahead and put I, it I out. I didn't there. hate it. It Let has the it through you. With the two episodes I saw, it's got good bones. I like the idea of a political thriller 
in the Jedi Order. Watch Andor. I was going to say, <laughs> we're going to go off on another tangent of all the things you should watch instead of the show we're reviewing here. But the whole time I was watching it, I was just thinking, man, House of the Dragon just plays that sort of drama out so much better. But And I know they're going to be so much different shows that yeah. they, they are. But I get what I you're just, saying, though. I wanted it I, like you. I wanted the execution to be better, but I liked the ideas. Yes, I understand where you're at thematically. OK, if I want this, then I'm going to this IP. If I want this, I'm going to this IP. And this isn't a show that stands on its own t- two feet yet. I think that's the biggest criticism that anybody can give it, whether you like it or don't like it. It's not a show that's a standalone feeling yet. It's constantly being connected to other things. However, it's been billed as we're getting away from the Skywalker saga. This is going to be something that's very independent in its feel. And we just, I know I am sounding a little hypocritical when I say this, but maybe for this show, throw all the episodes up on the streaming service and let people go through it and become emotionally connected to it. I'm typically on the binge side, so obviously I agree with that. But I do think from just the story standpoint that I did not feel like I'm missing out watching Andor having it, you know, week to week. I did not feel that way really with The Mandalorian. I would like to have watched it all, but I never felt that way. I do feel this way because this is such a different story. Like, this is probably a bad comparison, but it's the comparison I always make with The Last Jedi that it seems like a lot of people hated, that The Last Jedi brought in a bunch of new to Star Wars, and it's like, that's not my Star Wars. Episode 7 was all about setting up the Star Wars you know and bringing, oh, there's Leia, oh, there's Han, oh, there's Luke at the end. But then Episode eight's like, all right, we're going to do some new stuff now, and everybody hated Ryan Johnson and eviscerated him Say everybody, it. it was polarizing. There it are was. people who love it, people who hate it. But right now it's hard to have a conversation without with anybody except for you about liking The Last Jedi usually. Um, so... I look at I look at the Last Jedi as like I'm kind of intrigued by I mean they go to a casino planet that I feel like people hated but I want to see more of that away from the Skywalker saga but I do want to see more of that that that's kind of what I'm hoping we get from this is you still got Coruscant all the rest of the planets I guess were were new to this as far as I know I'm sure they appear in books or some kind of canon somewhere but um, you know the way the Jedi look look are different that it's like that's not my Jedi but I need to keep an open mind with this, but I feel like that's happened before and has not been well received. So I hope it doesn't make people shut down now that we've only had a little bit of the setup and maybe episode three will be, I'll give it one more episode and then people will finally buy into it. But I feel like this is good to have this because like I said, the only other thing I really know about star Wars is playing the video games of the old Republic um, from Knights of the old Republic and then playing the, the online game, uh, just the old Republic. But there's so much lore to both the Jedi and the Sith that I hope we get with this and I hope they continue with because they've already, they, I'm sure it's been one of the millions of things they've scrapped already, but they announced the Knights of the Old Republic movie. It's like, that would be perfect, but so many people I feel like will not buy into it because yeah. it's like, well, that's not my Star Wars or such and such it hasn't been invented yet. And there really is a tough balance right now of trying to appease the casual fan while also appeasing the diehard fan yes. and making everybody on the same page of having a unique and fun experience. There are a lot of people that feel that all of Star Wars has to cater to their sensibilities and that yeah. it can't, you can't have sectors of Star Wars that play more to kids like episode one did compared to, or, or even Return of the Jedi in some arguments, uh, compared to Empire Strikes Back, compared to A New Hope, compared to Revenge of the Sith that play a little bit more to those adult themes it feels like. I do want to get into what I thought was a really cool moment there in episode two with Master Torben with that sort of deep force powered meditation and floating. And it felt very unique and interesting to me. And I completely bought into it. And even the fact that that is a character that took the poison and offed himself for a reason that will be explained in the series. That's the thing. I was disappointed. We didn't get another Trinity fight basically with him against Mm. her, but then him doing that. It's like, I want more right now. Just, just in this episode, I want more, but I assume that's going to very much pay off in the future via flashback, whatever, to know why ultimately, yeah, you know what? I need to take this poison. This is a weird show in that I enjoy it more on paper than I do actually watching it. And I don't know even how to describe it, but that's where I'm at currently with it. I don't know if this is a way to describe that, but something I kept thinking the whole time, because one of, one of the things they're using to market this the most is this is a Star Wars series made by Star Wars fans. Yeah. And they're using that as a positive. And some people could take that as, so it's just a fan-made thing. I mean, it's got a $130 million budget, so it's not just a fan-made thing necessarily. Somebody but, it, yeah. um, you know, 
I I like that approach. I like viewing fan made things a lot of times. There's fan made Power Ranger stuff that I enjoy. There's fan made Halo stuff that I enjoy. There's Mortal all kind Kombat. of fan Mortal Kombat. Some of the best stuff that's been done in the Mortal Kombat universe is fan made. Friday the Thirteenth. Okay, that's anyway, where it stops. Um, <laughs> but like, so now the one thing you can't say this about is when Disney is putting 130 million dollars behind it. If you're like, yeah, that was kind of cheap, but if it's a fan doing it, it's great. And so from the, I'm getting to the whole why it looks good on paper. Yeah. From the on paper side of things, I really like that execution and with Disney money and power behind it, not so much. But the idea of it's good enough, I'm still in. To me, it just felt. I've been using the term cheap to describe it. To me, it felt more clunky than cheap. And that's where I'm at after a couple of episodes. But I think it's going to find more of a footing. I'm giving it more of a chance. I'm excited for episode three based on the hype I've heard. And I'm really excited about that. What did you think of the introduction of the Wookiee Jedi? Tyler, was that something that has got you more hooked to figure out that storyline going forward? Uh, yes, I I have been saying for years I want more Wookiees in Star Wars, whether that's a series or movie entirely based on Kashyyyk or just a story with more Wookiees woven throughout it. So uh, I will stick around for the Wookiees, yes. And I this is not a... Sh- I mean, Chewbacca is a person inside a Wookiee costume with Peter Mayhew playing that. I 100% felt watching him after he did what he did and walked into his house. It, number one, it looked like Shrek in the in the, in the the swamp. Yeah. Number two, I've never more felt watching a Wookiee that, oh, that's just a dude wearing a monkey costume, basically. Like, that's what I got the, the feel. Like, imagine instead of Planet of the Apes, it's all just humans wearing costumes. Instead, like, that's what I felt. I feel like that, that was the one part where I was kind of like, okay, I'm into it. I'm cool. Wookiee Jedi, that's going to be great and everything. But, like, that one just like, oh, it's just some dude running around in a furry I, costume. I can't pronounce his name, but this is the guy that played Chewbacca in the sequel trilogy and also in the solo movie that's playing this character of... Yunus Suatamo? Yes, that is correct. Um, and I, I just think that there's opportunity there for that character to oh, find definitely. a lot of a fan base. So I'm excited to see these remaining episodes, which is what I was hoping those first two episodes would do, It's just sort of... Get me invested in the story. That's how I would be judging this. And right now, I'm interested enough to continue this journey. We'll see as we go through this adventure together whether or not Tyler sticks with it or he bails on it, and that'll be a a great barometer on it. And there's one thing coming off these first two episodes that I couldn't stop thinking, and and I'm not doing myself any favors by thinking this. When they show, when they go to Coruscant, and they show Sol teaching the younglings there, I'm not thinking Order 66 or anything, but the only thing I can think is, you know who I know for a fact is in the building right now? Palpatine. Yoda. Yoda. Yeah, it got to be Yoda. He's Yoda is 100% years old. in the building Yoda. right now. Yeah, Palpatine wouldn't That be he's there. still in his seven or eight hundreds at that point. Mm-hmm. That I'm starting to think, and I could not get my mind out of it. And then when they showed, uh, what's his name? I just forgot his name again. Um, the one that was floating there. Torben. Torben. When, he, when they show him, I'm like, that's a Yoda move. That's something he would do. He would be so powerful. He'd just sit there and meditate while putting a force field up that you can't get past. I could not get that, and this is bad on my part, but I could not get that out of my head of if Yoda shows up, because that's the one I feel like you can definitely tie to right now as opposed to, you know, anybody from the Skywalker saga. Palpatine, I don't know if he's 100 when he gets to that point or not. I would assume he wasn't that old, but all I'm thinking is like, I'm either going to hate it or love it, and I don't know which one I'm thinking, but I feel like if there's any kind of fan service in there to tie this together at all, whatever it may be, that I feel like there's a chance for that. I don't know if I'm going to, and whether it's Yoda or not, that's just the one I kept thinking of. It's like, I don't know if I'm going to like or hate it because this is so different. It's kind of hard to get used to, but I want to get used to it with nothing. But if Yoda shows up and it's a cool scene and it's not him jumping around like a Mexican jumping bean in uh, episode two or whatever that was. It was episode two. Then then, then great. If you do it the right way, great. But that was the one fear I had was there's chances to to tie it in, even though it's 100 years before. I kind of hope they don't, and if they do, they've got to do this the right way. The architect- Technically, Chewbacca could show up, too, because he would have been in, in his 500s, I believe, four yeah. or 500s during this time. The architecture brings all the prequel flair, and I don't know who they're going to utilize and who they're not. Obviously, it being said 100 years beforehand, there's only a, a select few that could possibly fit that, but the architecture tells you, hey, I'm in prequel times, even though we are not. Okay, John, we will continue 
to break down the remaining episodes. They stream weekly on Tuesdays. We'll have our reaction to the show each week on Wednesdays here on The Meltdown. Make sure you like and subscribe. And head on over to our title sponsor, where you can be quite a force user over at MyBookie. Go to MyBookie.ag and maybe you can uh, will sports to go your way when you're betting on sports there in the sports book. You can bet on uh, the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, get ready for football season, or you can play in the casino with the slot machines or go to the live casino with real blackjack dealers. Just use promo code next round. You see it right there. Promo code next round when you sign up, get a first deposit bonus on us and our friends at MyBookie.ag. What do you think of the acolytes so far? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I'm sure there's some people that just absolutely despise this thing and want to see it burn to the ground. Who knows how many things are going to burn to the ground in the Acolyte series as it's already been a part of the storyline going into our main antagonist and protagonist in this story so far. We would love to hear from you in the comment section below right here on The Meltdown.